Hideki Nishimura is an online gamer who goes by the name Rujin and mains a tank. One day, he falls in love with a cute girl character in the fantasy adventure game Legendary Age. However, when he offers her an in-game marriage proposal, she declines and explains that she is a man in real life. This traumatized Hideki. He decided he would never fall in love with another female character again. However, a girl character in his guild, the Alley Cats, her in-game name is Akko, and she mains support and healer. She is the typical player that doesn't bother with the stats of the equipment as long as it is cute. Akko becomes endeared to Rujin. And by endeared, she's infatuated with every feature about him to the point of obsession. Rujin fears that if he returns her feelings, she will become just another guy in real life. Akko tried to propose to him multiple times before Hedeki agreed to marry her. On the other hand, their other group members are Apricot, their guild leader, and that one lousy premium player that doesn't hesitate to spend money on premium items. She mains a maid, Schwein, which means pig in German, and mains a swordsman. The guild leader decides to have a real-life meetup. This is where Hedeki discovers that Akko is a girl in real life, and so are his two other male guild mates. Not only are they girls in real life, but they're also his schoolmates. Dashu and Kaiou, whose in-game name is Apricot, with the biggest melon. She is the student council president of their school. While Sagawa Akane, Akei Shwain, is the typical popular tsundir girl but flat, she refuses to acknowledge her gamer otaku side because she just wants a simple school life and is a classmate of Hedeki. Akko became very close and sweet to Hedeki even though it was their first time seeing each other in person. She thinks they are really a married couple, like in the game. Afterward, Akane warned Hedeki her classmate, not to tell anyone that she was part of the game and don't be too friendly towards her in school. Because of their closeness, Akko got easily jealous, but Akane clarified that she would not steal her husband. Unfortunately, the next day, Akko went into their classroom and called him his in-game, Rujin, and revealed to other students that they were already a married couple. That embarrassed him, the same as Akane. She called her by her in-game name but in a friendly way, Shu chan they talked to Akko, explaining that the game and reality are separate and she shouldn't call them their in-game name. Surprisingly, they discovered that Akko has trouble distinguishing fact from fantasy, leading to awkward moments, and her behavior towards Hedeki in class was becoming more troubling than cute. For this reason, Hedeki got the idea that they would help Akko to change her mentality. They just need to make her realize that the game is not reality, and that made her terrified of his plan. So, Kaiu got an idea, as being the daughter of one of the board of directors in their school, and being a student council president, she made the net game club. Kaiu tried to pressure Akane in a good way, because she declines to join the club and is in denial, net games are her regular hobby only. But Kaiu laid out all the perks she will have by joining their club. And also, she will be quickly getting outleveled by the rest of them if she doesn't join. She couldn't decline when she heard that the specs were too high. Eventually, Akane realized their club was pointless because Akko still couldn't differentiate between reality and fantasy worlds. Kaiu also confesses that their club has a time limit because they don't have formal permission to have a club, and they need a professor to approve their club. However, Hedeki approaches his first love in the game, Nekoheim, who admits that he is a man in real life. Hedeki told her he wanted advice on the condition of Akko and explained everything to her, and she said that he could handle it and had faith in himself. As a result, he talks to Akko and explains again they are not really married couples but ordinary schoolmates. But strange things happen because Akko feels he talked to some girl on the game and said negative things about her. Even if he denies it, she already knows. And that's the girl's superhero instinct. She also wants to know the girl's name and thank her for helping her husband. But we all know that she will never do that. That made Hedeki scared of her jealous mood. Later that day, he talks to Nekoheim and tells her what happened to him and Akko. But he didn't know Akko followed him and saw him talking to another girl. He explains that the girl she saw is the one he loved before, but she declines his proposal. Akko became more jealous and angry towards Nekoheim, so she left, followed her, and talked with her. Ever since Nekoheim reappeared in the game, Akko didn't go to school and tells her guildmates that she will meet offline with a man she doesn't know. That makes her friends worry. Akko finally acknowledges that the game is separate from reality, but in a sarcastic way. That made Hedeki approve of Akko meeting others in real life because they are only married inside the game. 
However, Kaio and Akane talk to Hedeki, which makes him realize that he really likes Akko and runs where the meetup will be. He saw Akko standing and told her he didn't allow him to meet another man as her in-game husband. And he suddenly notices his professor Yuisato beside Akko, and she suddenly says that she is Nekoheim, pointing to Yuisato. Realizing his professor played Hedeki feelings, she suddenly attacks her. Hedeki cared enough to act when Akko was about to do something rash. Based on her behavior, he would undoubtedly have his hands full. Fortunately, Yuisato can defend herself. Afterward, after Kaiu's threatening invitation, Yuisato becomes their club's professor. Akko and Hedeki reminisce about their first meeting in the game world. Akko remembers it as a romantic encounter where she was saved by Hedeki's character. On the other hand, Hedeki sees it as an awkward situation, where he accidentally stumbled upon Akko's character while exploring the game. Meanwhile, Akane fears her friend Nanako discovering her hobby of playing online games. Akane has been careful to keep her school and gaming personas separate, but Nanako is not convinced by Akane's denials. While in the game, they encountered a beginner player that needed help. Hedeki, our boy, becomes her shining armor. Her name is Set, a busty player who doesn't know how to play the game. Hedeki helped her and explained what her character does because their character is the same. Set gets chummy with Rujin, much to Akko's dismay. Meanwhile, the gang decides to try out a first-person shooter game, where they discover Akko's hidden talent for sniping. However, their enjoyment is short-lived when Nanako, Akane's friend, reveals she is set in the Legendary Age game which shocks Hedeki and, of course, Akane. While Akko, she unable to handle the jealousy and feels threatened by Nanako's presence, she skips school the next day and declares that she is dropping out to focus on the game. After school, Akane and Hedeki have a heartwarming conversation about Akko and their gang. Akane said she could hang out with him forever, not in a romantic way but being friends, because Hedeki is the kind of guy who will not leave you behind, whatever your personality. Hedeki, worried about Akko's well-being, visits Akko at home, and he reaches out to her mother for help. This shocks him because she knows about him and is her daughter's husband in the game. He explained everything to her. This declaration raises a red flag for Hedeki and Akko's mother, who recognize the seriousness of Akko's withdrawal from the real world. Her mother is late for work. She said that her daughter was out of her care and he was the one who should be looking after her. Afterward, he knocked on Akko's door, which made her surprised, but it meant something else to her because Hedeki opened the door. He saw her thick body and her gigantic opi. He immediately closes the door and lets her put on clothes. But when he opens it again, she removes all her underwear. But our Hedeki boy is such a gentleman. He angrily said to her get some clothes on. Moving on, Hedeki gently persuades her to reconsider her decision and seek help. He offers his support and understanding, and said to their sensei Nekoheim, he will also drop out, slack off, and play the game forever. But Nekoheim understands what he was trying to do. That made everyone surprised, especially Akko. She said that if he does that, he cannot see Kaiou and Akane in real life anymore. <laughs> It really hit her big time. Eventually, everything became clear to her, and she decided to return to school and face her fears, Akko taking the first steps towards overcoming her social anxiety and reconnecting with the real world. Meanwhile, the group faced some academic challenges, as finals were coming up and Akko's attendance was still shaky. Akko struggled to balance her love of gaming with her responsibilities as a student, and her friends tried to help her find a way to study effectively. They even drew parallels to the last arc of Sword Art Online 2, where the merits of studying virtually with friends were discussed. Hedeki's desire to confess his feelings to Akko. He enlisted the help of his friends, who were experts in the art of rejection. But things did not go as planned. <laughs> Feeling heartbroken, Hedeki cries out, saying he's through with Akko even though he loves her like crazy. Akane called Akko and asked her what had happened. <laughs> and that explains everything. Well, who really wants to be demoted from wife to girlfriend? Summer had finally arrived. However, Kaio, being the responsible one, implemented a no-net rule for the first 24 hours of the camp, which made Akko nervous. When they arrived at Kaio's private beach, Akko's in her swimsuit, showing her big mountains and perfectly shaped body. That Hedeki can't resist always looking at her makes her feel shy. 
A few moments later, all the members are already showing their swimsuits. All the girls tried to put sunscreen on him, which made our boy Hideki Nishimura very lucky. <laughs> Hedeki had been waiting for the perfect moment to confess his feelings to Akko, and it finally arrived. With the help of girls, Hedeki was able to confess his love to Akko. <laughs> However, Akko's inability to distinguish between reality and gaming caused some complications. Meanwhile, the hotel they stayed at was doing a cross-promotion with the Legendary Age game. They tried to play in the computer lobby. When Hedeki tried to log into his account, Akko tried to see his password and got interrupted. So when he continued typing his password, it didn't log in. So he tried it again, and it went through. Later that night, Rujin and Akko meet in the Legendary Age hotel lobby. Akko invited him to her room, but he signed out for a while, and returned, which Akko didn't notice. She said they were alone and wanted to exchange some lewd chats. We know it's a sexy time for them on the game, which Rujin's delight. Day Hedeki discovered that his Rujin account had been hacked. He was devastated. His hard work and progress had been erased, leaving him helpless and vulnerable. But as he began to process what had happened, Hedeki's thoughts turned to Akko. He knew how much she valued their virtual marriage and worried about how the hack would affect her. Akko quickly caught on to the fact that something was wrong with Rujin. The imposter who had taken over Hedeki's account behaved in strange, unsettling ways that were completely unlike Rujin's usual behavior. Akko was unnerved by the impersonator's creepy behavior. Hedeki's friend Kaio felt partly responsible for the hack. He had suggested that they use a public computer to access the game, which had made it easier for the hacker to steal Hedeki's information. Together, they hatched a plan to catch the hacker and recover Hedeki's stolen items. Because that hacker had already sold all his items, they worked tirelessly, tracking down clues and working their way through the game's virtual world to find the perpetrator. Along the way, Hedeki and his guild made a fake website just to set him up like he does and trace his IP address because he is making real money trades with them. In short, the game admins also help them, and he takes profound responsibility for what he did. After successfully recovering his erosion married Akko again and invited all their friends, who helped them trace the hacker. He told Akko she should like him more in real life, not his in-game character Ruja. <laughs> The members decided to participate and showcase their gaming skills when an upcoming culture festival was announced. The group agreed to win a siege war, a guild versus guild battle for control of a castle in Legendary Age. They planned to take a picture of the school's emblem, flying over the castle, which they believed would impress their peers and prove their worth as gamers. As the group prepared for the upcoming battle, they realized they were unsuited to PvP battles. Their leader, Master, was soundly defeated by everyone and the group struggled to keep up with the other guilds. Despite their difficulties, the group continued to fight, and their repeated failures became the source of some humorous moments throughout the episode. Wallenstein, an elite PvP guild known for its ruthless tactics and unrelenting attacks. Despite their reputation, Kaio felt their expertise would be invaluable in the upcoming battle, so she reached out to their leader to negotiate a deal. The negotiations were tense, but in the end, Kaio convinced the Wallenstein Guild to join forces with the Alley Cats. However, even as they began their siege attack, she couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The Wallenstein leader proved arrogant and difficult to work with. As the battle raged on, tensions only continued to rise. While the Alley Cats were in awe of the Wallenstein Guild's impressive abilities, they couldn't help but feel uncomfortable with the way they were winning. <laughs> And then, just when it seemed like they had finally achieved victory, the unthinkable happened. The Wallenstein leader betrayed them, claiming the castle for his own guild. Kaio and her guild were devastated but didn't let their defeat consume them. Instead, they used it as a learning experience. They knew they had to be more careful in choosing their future allies, so the Alley Cats set out to prepare for the next round of siege warfare where they would take on Wallenstein. Ultimately, the Alley Cats emerged from their defeat stronger and wiser. They knew that the road ahead would be difficult, but they also knew that they had each other, and that was all they needed to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The final battle had arrived, and the Alley Cats were ready to face their most formidable challenge yet. 
They had been preparing for this moment for weeks. The enemy guild, led by Wallenstein, had fortified their castle and prepared for an assault. The Alley Cats knew that a direct attack would be suicide, so they devised a plan to exploit the game mechanics to their advantage. Nekoheim, the guild's leader, teamed up with her loyalists to provide the manpower to breach the castle's defenses. Nanano, one of the guild's members, provided a timely distraction, allowing Akain and Master to do their thing. With pumps from Nekoheim and Akko, they defeated the enemy's most potent fighters and made their way to the castle's heart. Meanwhile, the Alley Cats were faced with a dilemma. They had to defend against Wallenstein's expected assault but knew they couldn't defeat them. Instead, they decided to keep them occupied while they completed their mission. The Alley Cats could remove the castle's power source, leaving Wallenstein without their greatest weapon. The battle was won, but not without a cost. Some of the Alley Cats had sacrificed to absorb Wallenstein's skills, and they would never be the same again. As the dust settled, the Alley Cats celebrated their victory. They had achieved what many thoughts were impossible and did it together. The cultural festival had also gone, and Hedeki and Akane had grown closer. However, as they stood together, basking in their victory, Hedeki referred to her as his partner. Akane was pleased and realized they had a future beyond the game. In the end, the Alley Cats accomplished their mission and grew closer as a team. They had faced and overcome their fears, becoming more robust because of it. As they looked to the future, they knew they could face any challenge together and emerge victorious.